We are going to continue the UCI Math 2A sample file number one. We are on number nine. This one says a balloon ascending at a rate of 12 feet per second is at a height of 80 feet above the ground when a package is dropped. How long does it take the package to reach the ground? Hence, the acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second squared downward. Use antiderivatives. You may leave your answer in radical form. Okay, so this one we are given that acceleration is constant. So we can notate this in a few ways. We know that acceleration of t is negative 32. We put a negative sign because it's pointing downwards. Okay, so and it's constant. Gravity is constant. Okay, so v of t would be what? We just find the antiderivative negative 30 t plus some constant c. They tell us that the initial velocity is 12 feet per second. It doesn't sound like it, quite, quite like it in this problem, but at the instance that the package is dropped, the initial velocity, because it's on the balloon still, it's still going upward 12 feet per second. So v of 0 is 12. So we just plug in t as 0. 0. So we get c is 12. So our v of t is minus 32t plus 12. Okay, so now we want to find the position or the height. So we just integrate, uh, you don't know integration, never mind, antiderivative of velocity. I don't know if I said integrate earlier, but we're doing antiderivatives, okay? In this class, you don't know integrals yet. We're doing antiderivatives, all right? So to find position, that's just the antiderivative. So we, we call it y of t. That is, once again, we find the antiderivative. That is what? Minus 16t plus 12t plus some constant c. And they tell us the initial height is 80. So y of 0 is 80. So once again, we plug in t as 0 into here, we get c is equal to 80. So our y of t, our position is, oh, sorry, this should have been a squared there. Okay, so I was anti-differentiating. So once again, um, oh, by the way, you can check your answer by taking derivative. If we take derivative of this guy, we get this. If we take derivative of this, we get this. So we're on the right track. So our y of t, as I said, um, is minus 16t squared plus 12t plus 80. Okay, so we found our position function, or the height function. They're asking how long does it take the package to reach the ground? So it would reach the ground when y is 0, the height is 0. Okay, so here we have to use the quadratic formula. They say that you can just leave your answer in radical form. Um, let me, so we can say t is 6 minus 12 plus or minus square root of 12 squared minus 4 times minus 16 times 80 all over 2 times minus 16. I believe that's the quadratic formula, correct? All right, so then honestly, I would just leave it like this or I would not put the negative answer. So it should be negative 12 plus um, square root of 144 minus 4 times or plus 4 times 16 times 80 over negative 32. Okay, I would just leave it in this form, honestly. Actually, we should take the minus over here, actually, because we're dividing by negative 32. So the top would be a negative number, divide by a negative number, it will be a positive number. And by the way, this should be, the units should be seconds. Okay. Graph of f is here. 
sketch f prime and f double prime. Okay, so for f prime, we know that it has to be zero when there's a relative maximum for f. So there's a relative maximum here. Your f prime should be zero there. F prime should be zero here, F prime should be zero there. Okay? So when the function decreases, the derivative is negative. When the function increases, the derivative is positive. So it should look something like this. So here the function is decreasing, the derivative should be negative, and then it should look something like this. This is F prime. And actually, now I even purposely drew it like this because where are the points of inflection? Where does f change concavity? Right here, right here, let's say that's the origin. And is that it? It's concave up until here, it's concave down, until here it's concave up, yes. Okay, so at the points of inflection, that's where the derivative f prime should have a max or min also. So this is aligned with what I was sketching. So Second derivative is where there are zeros, but it changes, f changes concavity, as I said. So this is concave up, so the second derivative should be positive. This is concave down now, so the second derivative should be negative, but then it goes back to concave up. So this is f double prime. It's just a sketch, not a very good sketch, but it's a valid sketch. Okay. All right, we're asked to fill in these things. Here it says function f is continuous at number a if, remember the limit definition for continuity, limit as x approaches to a, f of x is equal to f of a. That's how we know something is continuous. Okay, the derivative of a function f at number a is f prime of a, which equals blank, if this limit exists. So this is asking the limit definition of the derivative. So we can say limit as h approaches to zero, f of a plus h minus f of a over h. This is a valid definition. We can also say there's a different definition, limit as x approaches to a, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. This is also okay. Okay. Intermediate value theorem says, remember we used this in the previous part of the video to solve one of the problems. This says if some function f is continuous on some interval a to b, okay, and let's say um, Let's say f of c is between f of a and f of b, then there, well, let's put this as some other variable then instead. Let's say it's like m or something like that. Okay. Then there exists a value of x in the closed interval a to b such that f of c is equal to m. Okay? And actually we can even say this is like this. I think that's a better way. Okay? So you can double check if it's including the endpoints. I don't think it is actually. So this is what the intermediate value theorem says. All right, next. What theorem says, if f is continuous on a closed interval a to b, then f attains an absolute max value, f of c, and an absolute min value, f of d, at some number c and d in the interval a to b. This is talking about absolute max min, that's the extreme value theorem. Okay. A function f, capital F, is called an antiderivative of lowercase f on an interval i if... This is easy. This is capital F prime of x is lowercase f of x for all x in i. Okay. Find the dimensions of a rectangle with largest area that can be inscribed in a semicircle of radius 2 inches. So let's sketch out how this looks. 
So let's say this is the semicircle, all right? We're gonna inscribe some rectangle in here, okay? So let's say this is the center of the circle. Let me even draw like some axis there. Then this guy is radius r, which they give us as two, okay? This guy is the radius, right? Now we can say this portion is the height of the rectangle, all right? And this small portion, let's call it uh, the base, okay? But notice for the rectangle, it's 2B. So we gotta be careful when we notate it like this. I'm gonna notate this as B. So it's this half of the base of the rectangle, which is this triangle side actually, okay? Because I want to do that because, well, I know this is a right angle there, so I can use the relationship. R squared is B squared plus H squared, okay? But we'll need to use it in a bit. Why are we trying to optimize? We're trying to optimize the area. So what's the area of the rectangle? That's, as I said, we need 2B. If this is B, the whole base is 2B times H. Okay, so we want to optimize A, so we need to take the derivative, but there's two variables here, so we're gonna use this now to eliminate one of the variables. We know R is two, so it's four, is B squared plus H squared. All right, so we solve for either one, B or H, and let's solve for H. So H is square root of four minus B squared. All right, so A prime, or okay, let's rewrite as two B times square root of four minus B squared. Now we can find A prime. That is, we need product rules of first, D second, times minus two B by the chain rule, okay, plus second, D first. We want to set this equal to zero to optimize, okay? When we set it equal to zero, we can simplify a lot of math. We can multiply both sides by the square root term, but before that, let me combine some terms if possible. We get a minus four b squared over two square root four minus b squared plus two square root four minus b squared is equal to zero. These can cancel, so then we now multiply both sides by the square roots. We get minus two b squared is, oh sorry, plus uh, two times four minus b squared is equal to zero. Okay, so what do we get? We got negative two b squared plus eight minus two b squared is zero. So eight is four b squared b squared is two, b is plus or minus root two. Let's just take the positive because we know that b has to have some length, okay? So if b is root two, then what's h? h is right here. So h would be square root of four minus two, which is also square root two, okay? So the dimensions, so here you have to be careful again, we found b, but remember that the rectangle is 2b. So it'll be two root two by root two. And this is inches, this is inches actually. Okay, so don't forget your units. All right, that's how we do that one. Okay, then let me see, let me finish this page. And then I'll call it a part again, and I'll do the last problem on part three. Okay, we have this limit that we need to find. Well, we're trying to find all these limits. Okay, actually, I think there's two more pages. Did I skip the back? Yeah, there's two more problems then. Because there's this one, the derivative one, and this one. So let me just finish the limit one in this part, okay? So we want to find this limit. How do we do that? Well, we can try, of course, plug it in zero first. We get square root nine, which is three, minus three, which is zero. So zero on top, zero squared, so zero on the bottom. 
zero is zero, that's indeterminate, we've got to do something about it. Here we can use the technique where we multiply by the conjugates. Okay, so here I'm just multiplied by the conjugate. So this is the limit as x approaches to zero. So what happens when we multiply by the conjugate? Some square root, that square root should go away, one of them. So it would be x squared plus nine minus nine over x squared times square root x squared plus nine plus three. Okay, you can see here that nine minus nine would be zero, so that goes away. These would cancel, so we are left with just one on top. So we can clean it up, limit as x goes to zero, one over square root of x squared plus nine plus three. So when we do that, we get one over six. And that's our answer. Okay. Here, what happens when limit as x goes to infinity of this guy? Well, we get infinity over infinity, so we could do L'Hopital's rule. That's fine. You could also recognize it's a horizontal asymptote. So degree at the top is one, degree at the bottom is two. Degree at the bottom is bigger, so this guy's going to dominate. So there's an uh, asymptote at y is equal to zero, horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. So we can do that the quick way like that, or we can do it the long way also, where we, let me, so let me do L'Hopital's rule. So we differentiate the top, that would be 5. Differentiate the bottom, that would be 14x minus 4. Okay? And that, you can see, is 0. All right? If we do it the long way, that's limit as x approaches to infinity. We Remember, we can factor, or yeah, factor out the biggest degree, so x squared. So if I factor out x squared on top, that would be 5 over x plus 2 over x squared. Okay, over the bottom would be x squared, 7 minus 4 over x plus 8 over x squared. There we go. All right, so these x squared would cancel. So as x goes to infinity, the top would go to 0. How about the bottom? The bottom... These two terms will go to zero, but this is seven still. So this is again zero. So I solved it three different ways. Okay. Limit as x approaches three from the left of this guy. Well, what happens when x is three? We get three divided by zero. So there's a vertical asymptote there. So we're finding out does it go to positive infinity or negative infinity? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, when as x approaches to three, from the left, so for example, like it'll be like 2.9, 2.99, 2.9999, 9, something like that. The top will always be positive. How about the bottom? It'll be a small negative number. How do I know that? Well, remember I just said it's like 2.9, 2.99, 2.9999, 2.9999, so on and so forth, okay? We're pushing 3 from the left, so values a little bit smaller than 3, never touching 3 though, okay? So that's why it'll be negative, okay? So a positive number over a very small negative number, that would be negative infinity. That's how we solve this one. Limit as x approaches to 1 of this guy. Again, we can just do L'Hopital's rule because it'll be 0 over 0, that's indeterminate. So if we do L'Hopital's rule, so will be limit as x approaches to 1 of derivative of the top is 1, derivative of the bottom is 4x cubed, which is 1 fourth, 1 fourth is the limit. So we could do that, or we can do this way again, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. Okay, here this one, limit as x approaches to 1 of this guy, is the absolute value, that's what's the trick here. You have to break this up into two limits, limit as x approaches to 1 from the left and limit as x approaches 1 from the right. As we approach 1 from the left, what happens to absolute value? It's on that negative branch, so it'll be negative x minus 1. How about when x approaches 1 from the right? 
by pushing from the right, which is the positive branch of the absolute value, right? So it'll be x squared minus 1 over the positive slope branch, I mean. So it'll be x minus 1. Okay, so if we evaluate the limit on the, from the left, what would that be? Well, it's x plus 1, x minus 1 would be factored at the top. These would cancel. So we're left with what? It would be negative 2. All right, how about from the bottom? It'll be limit as x approaches 1 from the right. Again, let me just factor it once more. These would cancel. So your limit would be 2. Limit from the left does not equal to the limit from the right. Does not exist. Okay. Actually, this key that I found online does not show any of this work, which I would not give credit for, honestly. But this is how you would do it. Okay, and I'll call it a part here actually. Please like this video if you found it helpful, and please subscribe to the channel to show your support and also to get notified for the last part, the remainder, remaining problems.